Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we got a pretty interesting show for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel. Now, today is going to be a pretty interesting one because we're going to be talking about my man Skip Bayless. Now, we don't talk about him a lot. Um, ever since Shannon Sharp left the show, ESPN First Take has seemed to be in the, it seems to be the show and other things um, that seem to be more interesting uh, to talk about. But this new Undisputed has a new has a different cast, and this cast now features Michael Irvin and a, a more constant uh, on the show is Keyshawn Johnson. And Keyshawn is quite different from uh, Skip Bayless's former partner uh, and Shannon Sharp. Why am I saying this? Well, as you guys know, back in, what year was it? I think it was 2021? Yeah, I think it was 2021 when Russell Westbrook joined the Lakers. Uh, at the time, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp were a bit trepidatious of the Lakers pulling off that move. But nevertheless, they went ahead and did it. And as you guys know, Shannon is a huge LeBron James fan, right? So once things started to go awry, Someone needed to take the blame, which seems to be the the, the 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 status quo with whatever LeBron team he's on. If the team doesn't do well, there's always going to be someone else that takes the blame. And in the case that year, the person that took the most blame was Russell Westbrook. Uh, Russell Westbrook did not have a great campaign with the Lakers that season. He simply didn't fit. But I refuse to believe that the reason that that team underperformed to the level that they did by even missing the playing tournament was because of just Russell Westbrook. But nevertheless, that's the way it seemed on Undisputed pretty much every single day because Skip Bayless pretty much daily would put together a low light reel where he would constantly make fun of Russell Westbrook to the point where a lot of us began to ask the question, which is, is this personal? Like, is this, per is this, this seems to be beyond sport. Shannon Sharp would always pile on uh, with him. So what happens? Skip now has Keyshawn to work with. Uh, since then, Russell Westbrook has moved on to the Clippers and he's doing fantastically well in his role. As a matter of fact, uh, the Clippers are now tied for the second seed in the Western Conference. Let me look at Russ' stats. This season, Russell Westbrook is averaging 11 points per game off the bench, 46% shooting. Uh, so he's shooting the ball. Uh, what is it? No, no, no. Is this? Uh, yeah, he's shooting the ball uh, pretty well for them. What is he doing? He's getting six, shooting 66% from free throw line while getting you 4.6 assists, five rebounds, one steal off the off off the bench, and only two. Uh, turnover. So Russell Westbrook and, of course, the other things that don't show up in the box score, like his emotional leadership, his energy, and all of those other things, his tenacity, et cetera, et cetera. So they were talking about the Clippers, right, to give you guys the backstory. And uh, after a game where Russell Westbrook contributed 10 points in the fourth quarter to help the, help the Clippers bring home a victory, I guess, I guess it was against the Golden State Warriors. So as they're talking about it, Skip Bayless now tries to do his usual Skip Bayless thing which is find a slick way to basically poop on Russell Westbrook. But in this particular case, because Skip started off talking about, oh, well, you know what, his legacy and this and this. And Keyshawn was like, what are you talking about his legacy? His legacy is just fine. And it got to the point where Skip actually had to, Skip didn't let him say that. And he now reiterated and tried to go back to the point like, no, this is the reason why. And and Keyshawn was like, no. He checked him and was like, no, listen. What happened with the Lakers that year did not tarnish his legacy. I'm sorry. So for those of you who didn't hear what uh, who didn't hear this exchange, I want to play for you now, and then we'll come back and, and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to this exchange here. As the Clippers rallied to pull up a nice win at Golden State without Kawhi Leonard, who's out with an adductor injury. So after a nightmare stint with the Lakers, Westbrook has found a niche and a home with the Clippers who continue to make a case they're the best team in the West, if not in the entire NBA. Keyshawn, after what happened with your Lakers, is Westbrook saving his legacy with the Clippers? What's his legacy, though, Skip? What is he saving? Like, what what we all know is a triple, uh, triple double crown uh, king. He, you know, he's... All right, let me tell you what he's saving. That one year with your team, okay. it was a long, hard year. Yeah. He led the league in turnovers until the last game of the season when Trey Young just slipped just past okay. him. So he finished second in turnovers. He finished dead last in three-point shooting, and it got so bad at Staples or now the Crypt that – do you remember this? They went that, as, But as he went up to shoot it, the whole building would go like, 
Oh, no. Yeah. You could hear the whole crowd like, no. Yeah. It's okay. a bad place and a bad right. time. It is. OK. He had, so, he had the yips. So it's it, a bad place and a bad time. It, it tarnished what he had done in averaging a triple-double four out of five See, I don't years. Think, I don't think it tarnished it at all. I think what you saw was somebody who hadn't played that style of basketball with a LeBron James. Remember, Brooke was all about, it was it. I'm the guy. I'm going to go down and move him to the cup. It's all about me shooting. Westbrook. Yeah, Westbrook. Uh, Brooke. Right. Uh, just shooting the ball and doing what I want to do on the offensive end and hustling on the defense. He got with the Lakers, and it just didn't work. Even though LeBron they didn't know wanted what to, it to work. Yeah, you yeah. wanted it to work, but yeah. it didn't work. So now you get with a Ty Lu, as I said, when he joined the Clippers, mm -hmm. somebody that can communicate and get him to buy in to what it is that they're trying to do. Whether it's Ty Lu, Brian Shaw, they know how to communicate in coaching to get him to respond a certain way. Everybody can't coach everybody just because you're a great player at something. It just doesn't work like that. So I don't know what legacy he would be Saving what would happen, though, is if he goes on and wins an NBA title. That would be big. That's going to be yeah, huge it would for be him. Huge. Yeah. Because he's going in the Basketball Hall he's of Fame regardless. In. Yeah. But it would be huge to be able to get a ring as an important part of the team. We're not talking about the ninth man, the tenth man, the eleventh man. We're talking about a guy who's an important right. part of the team. That would be sweet. So you heard the exchange between these two. Um, Gentlemen, what are my thoughts on this? I'm, I don't believe Skip Bayless is serious about his thing of questioning Russell Westbrook's legacy. I, I, I really can't take Skip Bayless serious at all. Russell Westbrook, before he joined the Lakers, was already on a top 75 team of all time. He was already considered to be one of the top 75 players to ever play basketball. Um... If you make it on that list, you're going to the Hall of Fame, which essentially means that Russell Westbrook was going to was going to the Hall of Fame before he became a Laker. So for Skip to suggest that Russell Westbrook's legacy was tarnished uh, in a year with playing with the Lakers, the question then becomes, why would it only be Russell Westbrook's legacy that gets tarnished in that year when they lost as a team? Did Anthony Davis's legacy get tarnished in that year? Did LeBron James' legacy get tarnished in that year? Why is it only limited to Russell Westbrook? Makes no sense, but nevertheless, uh, they will say, oh no, listen, some people say, well, Russell played well. Did the team play well? Who played well? Who played well? And I don't need any empty stats that led to nothing. If you're putting up great numbers and it doesn't result in winning, I don't care about your stats. Especially when you have good enough talent to get it done and you don't is one thing if you don't have the requisite talent to be a competitive team and you yourself are the only person putting up great numbers that's one thing but if you have the requisite talent to at least make the playoff they didn't even make the play in no granted when the lakers traded russell westbrook to the jazz and then ultimately ended up with the clippers they got better but it wasn't just because of letting russell westbrook go getting rid getting rid of him helped them because he was a bad fit because he was redundant uh, in that offense, but they also brought in other pieces, right? They also brought in other pieces. That's number one. Number two, Skip kept kept on talking about, oh, he's a cancer and da 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 da, and this and it with various reports from Dave McMenamin talking about Russell Westbrook was a locker uh, a vampire in the locker room. Ever since Russell Westbrook went to the Clippers, I never heard anything like this. If anything, Ty Lue and these guys have been nothing of, nothing but complimentary of him. We also found out that when Russell Westbrook left Washington, we're finding out that they didn't even want him to leave. Okay, Oklahoma City, I never heard this anywhere. Of all of the previous teams that Russell Westbrook played for, we never heard these comments. The moment he got to the Lakers, all of a sudden now he's a vampire. So do we really need to take those comments seriously when you're the only person saying this? All these other people never said it. They never said it. It seems like they were trying to build in a narrative. I think the issue that Skip had with Russell Westbrook is personal, dating back to his OKC days where Skip felt like Russell Westbrook basically sent the attack dogs on him and all of that. So Skip has his personal vendetta. But what happened yesterday on that show was that Keyshawn was like, whatever personal vendetta you and, you and Russell, whatever personal vendetta you have against Russell Westbrook has nothing to do with what you're saying right now. Just because you have an issue with him 
it doesn't mean that I'm just going to sit up here and let you spew any kind of nonsense all over the table. And we just run with it. And for Skip to say, oh, is Russell Westbrook's legacy to deliver? Like, it's just like, what are you talking about? Again, how can the guy need to save his legacy when he was already a top 75 guy who was already going to the Hall of Fame? So I, I'm, I'm confused here. I'm confused. Of that team who, who totally underperformed, we're just going to look at Russell Westbrook solely and Frank Vogel. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, Russell Westbrook wasn't there last year or uh, now when they were having some struggles. So to me, listen, I'm not buying that. And I'm happy that Keyshawn Johnson pushed back on Skip in that moment. Because had it been Shannon Sharp in the past, he would have been piling on. Thank God for somebody to provide a counterbalance on that show. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you on the next show.